Trish, the ex-soldier who'd been trapped in the back rooms with her now deceased squad, was having a hell of a week, with a heavy emphasis on hell. Not long ago, she'd narrowly escaped a bestial bunny in the bowels of Barnaby Bunn's Fun Emporium, one of the back room's many sinister enigmatic levels. Thankfully, with quick thinking, she'd been able to narrowly avoid her death at the cost of her assault rifle. Little did she know, she was about to stumble into another enigmatic den of horrors very, very soon. Escaping Barnaby Bunn's Fun Emporium had brought her back to the world of mindless gray corporate tedium that is Level 4, the abandoned office, where she'd long since gotten sick of the drab carpeting and dusty old partitions. She needed to get out of here and hopefully access an area in this strange new dimension that was a little more hospitable. Falling back on her military training, she decided to go about this as methodically as possible, checking off the area in sectors until she found a viable way out. It'd take a thorough search through every hallway, conference room, office space, and maintenance closet, but by God, she would get it done. One thing she got sick of seeing over and over again was office chairs. The same cheap plastic three-wheeler abominations that looked almost designed to collapse and injure their user the nanosecond after the warranty expires. They were about as common as dust particles in level four, and every single one of them was identical. So much so that many of them simply blended into the background. That's why, when she saw the special chair, it truly did capture her attention. Bear in mind, when we say special, we don't necessarily mean good. In fact, to Trish, the chair looked like a glitch that you might see in an old video game. It had several wheels sticking out at odd angles, and its back seemed both oddly long and curved at the top. How peculiar. For some reason, Trish felt the need to get closer. How would a person actually sit on this thing? She was determined to find out. That's why she made the mistake of touching this strange glitched chair, then blinked and saw everything had turned yellow. Suddenly, on every side she could see gaudy yellow wallpaper and feel damp carpet squelching beneath her boots. The air was filled with an irritating buzz that felt oddly like insects crawling all over her skin. While she didn't know it, Trish had no clipped into level zero, which is, for many, the most common point of entry into the back rooms as a whole. She would spend hours wandering these putrid yellow halls, feeling her sense of unease grow as she came to realize that there may not be a door to anywhere here. But Trish was no slouch. She'd always believed that if you can't find a door, the next best thing to do would be to make one yourself. She reached into her hefty backpack and pulled out her handy entrenching tool, a small fold-up shovel that came in extremely handy in times like this. She used it to help dig out a section of that ugly wet carpet and see the floorboards underneath. Now she was getting somewhere. There had to be some kind of logic to this place. There had to be somewhere above and somewhere below. And all that stood between her and it was a few brittle old floorboards. There'd be no challenge here. Trish smashed through a section of the floor with all her might until it gave away entirely, revealing a hidden chamber underneath. Perfect. There was no light down there, but she'd take no light over the endless buzz of the yellow halogen above her head in level zero. Trish took a chunk of wood from the broken boards and dropped it down into the hole, where it gave a clunk a moment later so at least she wouldn't be leaping down into oblivion. She sighed and took the plunge down into the dark. Trish felt the strain in her knees as she hit the ground. Hard concrete. And after a few seconds of darkness, new light flickered on, revealing the plain industrial room she was now standing in. Trish didn't have the tools to know it, but she'd just descended into a new enigmatic level, one appropriately nicknamed The Basement. Surely nothing will go wrong down here. Still, 
Trish was at least happy to be somewhere that felt familiar. She'd been in countless basements like this throughout her life at different family homes. Compared to the other nightmares she'd faced in the back room so far, this was positively homey. This kind of baseline comfort made her feel ready to explore further and find out what exactly was happening here. She approached a nearby door and opened it up, seeing a set of eerie stairs leading down into what looked like a flooded sub-basement filled with foul-smelling, murky water. While it obviously wasn't Trish's first instinct to go diving in the bilge water below, she'd also developed a kind of in-for-a-penny-in-for-a-pound mentality, where anything less than being stalked by an unkillable homicidal bunny rabbit really didn't seem like that much of a problem. Curiosity was pushing her onwards now, and dragging her down to the depths below. After stealing herself, she began walking down the stairs towards the cold embrace of the dark waters. Trish found herself in an expansive dark tunnel with a curved roof overhead, stretching into the distance like some disused train tunnel or giant sewer pipe. The only way to go was forward, so that's what she did, wading through deathly cold waters that went up to her lower ribs. It was so dark down in the tunnel that she needed to make sure of a tactical flashlight that she kept in her backpack just to make sure she wasn't waiting around in circles. The water itself was dark almost to the point of being impenetrable. Something about it made her feel profoundly nervous. But she pushed down the feelings and kept moving. Panic would only lead to death down here. As minutes eventually turned to hours, Trish just kept waiting. There was a mostly comforting, uneventful rhythm to it, until her concentration was broken by something brushing up against her leg under the water, sending a full-body shudder coursing up through her bones. What the hell was that? Some random piece of debris floating in the water that just happened to brush up against her leg. Or was it something alive? A fish? A leech? Or fingers? She shook her head, trying to dismiss the thoughts and keep moving. Impossible things have happened down here, but there's no point in getting all paranoid just yet. She'd save fear for the kind of evidence that truly warranted it. A wise decision, because such evidence would appear soon enough. Not that she had any idea, of course. Soon, wading became swimming as the water got deeper. Trisha's whole body was practically immersed in the water now. She was just lucky that she happened to be a strong swimmer, or all the equipment she was lugging around probably would have stopped her in her tracks. Still, the further she swam, the more she thought about that sensation of something brushing up against her leg. Like most things underwater, it felt cold and slimy, but something was different. Even though the sensation had long passed, she still felt a strange, lingering sting on the ankle it had touched. Needless to say, when she finally found somewhere to climb out of the water, she felt tremendously relieved. It was a narrow set of stone stairs, into what appeared to be an even narrower hallway. Far from ideal, sure, but she'd have given anything to finally be dry after this impromptu swimming session. That relief quickly dissipated when she climbed out and saw her ankle. Exactly where she felt something brush up her skin and the subsequent lingering sting, Trish saw four light scratches, configured as though they were left by the fingernails of a grasping hand. Was there something? Someone beneath the water? The thought was terrifying, and as if on cue, when Trish looked out into the waterlogged tunnels she'd just swam in from, she saw something in the distance. What might have been a dark figure cresting out of the water, slightly further than the light of her flashlight could reach. It didn't move, it just stood there, as though it was watching. Then Trish blinked, and it was gone reduced to ripples on the water's surface. A lot of what was happening here didn't make sense, but Trish knew one thing. She needed to keep moving right now, or something terrible was going to happen to her. Basements are creepy at the best of times, but this was on a whole other level, an enigmatic level specifically. Her body freezing and her clothes heavy and waterlogged, Trish rose up the uneven stairs and squeezed herself into the narrow hallway that led her in the opposite direction of the water she'd swam in from. 
The corridors were lit by archaic old halogen bulbs fizzing softly up above. At least up here, she had some hope of drying out, even though for now she was shivering from the intense cold her wet clothes were giving her. She was dripping onto the stony ground, trying to avoid getting scraped against the walls. That's when she felt it, the prickle of the hairs on the back of her neck, that primal, instinctual part of her brain just sensed something lurking behind her. And, almost automatically, her head whipped around to see it. In an important reminder as to why you should always trust your instincts, Trish saw what had set her off immediately, standing maybe 20 feet away from her, down in the direction she'd just been walking from. Just seeing it there knocked the breath from her chest. The only way she could describe the thing standing back there would be a rotting corpse, standing and watching without eyes. Its skin was gray, mottled, and loose, with long, gnarled yellow fingernails. It looked like dead bodies she'd seen on the news before, or in true crime documentaries, where the victim had been left underwater for a few weeks, before finally being dredged out. And there it was standing and waiting, as though the second Trish looked away, it had moved towards her. But Trish was wrong about that. This corpse wouldn't wait. After a moment of silence, the zombie-like creature rushed at her. Thanks to years of training, Trish was able to draw her sidearm and fire off several rounds into the shambling nightmare. The sudden shock caused it to stumble, leaking thick black water out of the bullet holes. This seemed to slow it down, but not meaningfully harm it. Still, that was probably the best Trish could hope for. While the waterlogged zombie was stunned, she turned and ran as fast as she could in the opposite direction, sustaining more cuts and bruises on her shoulders from the narrow walls. She could hear the wet slapping of the zombie's footsteps behind her, gaining on her. She needed to move faster, faster. If that thing got its claws wrapped around her again, she'd likely be joining it in the freezing depths. Then, Providence smiled on her. In the distance, she saw the chrome doors of an elevator. Why is it always an elevator? The specifics didn't matter. She just knew in the last moment like this, it was an elevator that saved her from certain doom. And it would probably be her way out here too as long as she could get away from this rotting monster in time. Calling upon her last reserves of energy and strength after hours of swimming, Trish picked up the pace and bolted towards the elevator. She slammed the call button, then turned around as it hummed into life, seeing the zombie a mere ten or so feet away from her. She needed to buy time. She raised her sidearm again and opened fire unloading the rest of the mag into the zombie's disfigured head. That's when she saw something even more nightmarish. There wasn't just one. It was a whole procession of waterlogged bodies, all marching down the narrow hallway towards her. Too many to ever possibly fight. In the nick of time, the elevator doors opened behind Trish, and she stepped backwards into the refuge of the elevator itself. She mashed the button for the floor above, feeling her anxiety spike as the zombies got closer and closer. When the doors finally closed, the zombies were mere inches away. She could feel their fists hammering on the other side. But by then, it was already too late for them. The elevator started to rise. She was safe again. For now. Want to continue your journey into all facets of the endless mystery that is the back rooms? Check out Level Zero, Entering the Back Rooms, for more on this seemingly infinite abyss from Back Rooms Explained. See you soon, friend.